Hello everyone, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. You might notice that I am not in the game, and there's a reason for that, and that is because if we go into the games folder, and we go into characters, there's only three characters. And the only remaining remnants of our sweet little cinnamon bun Sayori is Happy Thoughts. Yeah, pretty messed up. Alrighty, I'm going to cut ahead and we'll be in game. We're back. Okay, with that I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Yes, the only three girls. <sighs> Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. And I'm sure good fortune would will find me. Spoken like a true opportunist. God damn. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. Oh, God. She had red on her hands, and that was kind of uncool. Um, alright. Hmm. Let's pursue Yuri in this playthrough. So, Yuri likes dark and brooding crap, right? Passion. Damn. Tragedy. Ooh, extraordinary. Damn it. Sadness. Oh my god! <laughs> I swear my character is just drawn to weeb trash like myself. <laughs> okay. Incongruent. Thank you. Ambient. Thank you. Contamination. Yeah. Judgment. Uh, misfortune. Hmm. Raindrops. Depression. Unrestrained. Disorientated. Broken. Graveyard. <laughs> um, uh, immediately drawn to Kitty, but can't. Um, unending. Philosophy. Agonizing. Massacre. Rain cloud. Ah, oh, damn it. I think it was mostly pro Yuri anyway. Hi again, Shade. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everybody else is already hanging out. Oh, okay. What happened to Yuri's face there is one of those things I mentioned last episode that have, like, a random chance of happening. So yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye out for stuff like that. Thanks for keeping your promise, Shade. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh god. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. You're in front of the... the talk window, Monica. I can't read it. Natsuki certainly have a big mouth for somebody who keeps a manga collection in the cupboard. Natsuki finds herself stuck between seeing Monica and manga. Manga is literature! <laughs> Oh, the music change. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Shade. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Nat Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have an interest in picking up a book to read. 
Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So, it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. W wait I didn't mean it like that. Uh, if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. No, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try and be part of this club. So, even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Whew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everybody's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she is waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rummi rummaging around in the closet. Hmm. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit more. But at the same time, I'd feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse at the cover of a book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was forced, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, your eye... Sliding off your face there a bit. You wanna just, like, click and move that over? Oh, God. I wanted to reread some of it. Oh god, it went further off. <laughs> Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Aw, oh, cute. Is that so? What's the story about, anyway? Well, hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. This might be something to keep in mind, since Team Selvato are working on a new game. And, uh, it might have something to do with this... There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front of the cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. Stuff to keep in mind. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about limbs. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Uh... Are you not a fan of this sort of thing? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those sorts of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah. I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from strange new perspectives. When horrible things happen, not just because somebody wants to be evil. But because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway! Um... You okay there, Yuri? Then suddenly... I'm rambling. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not a 
again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body- <laughs> Wait a second, what did that say? I guess I don't get to read it. Damn. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I don't really think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. This is a literature club after all. Ah, that's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well start reading it, right? Oh wait, that's me. I might as well start reading it, right? Uh... Yes. I mean, you don't have to, but... Haha, <laughs> what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little bit apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Oh, all right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I really want to know what these things say. They disappear so quickly. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold the book between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean, once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm. On the, r on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb, after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted there for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri, is no lo Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the pages. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it off my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it with her own thumb. Hey Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Uh huh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. <coughs> Excuse me. Really? I was just thinking that the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, uh, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't get to that part yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. 
Yuri, are you feeling all right? Huh? Yuri's been a little bit fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I... I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Shade? Did something happen just now? Huh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. N no nothing? Ah, uh, don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes. It's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we could get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a me mental note of where I left, in left off in the book and then slip it into my bag. You're sus, Monica. I'm showing it to Natsuki because I'm protesting. I told Natsuki that I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair I share mine with her first. Shade, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What do you expect me to believe that you, are ac that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you, you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Let's be honest. I am? Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! It's like, when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you doing great things can be really disheartening, so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's exactly what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Don't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everybody is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Hi Shade! Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, I'm glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have suggestions for the club, like activities or things that we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off trying with the flow, not going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job! I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. 
It's easiest for me to keep everybody's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Oh, that way, it always counts when I put in some effort? Haha, <laughs> that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing's full. Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she just... She's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so I don't blame her coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think she if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Huh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more than glad you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go and get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for somebody who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat screens? Flat seats? Ugh. Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrolling, playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle. Closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. Did you now? Did you now? It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everybody is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big puddle of dark ink. So move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Ooh. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Huh? What was that? Did I say that aloud, out loud? <laughs> Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I, uh... He's gonna hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Huh? That's... I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. Sir, what kind of writing experiences do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates that you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, and then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. 
It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. And I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make the style really deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and then they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting, getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but all things come with practice, and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that, some, that everybody else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsu can be a little bit biased though. Biased? How? Uh, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsu. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought. I'd love to sh share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if there is a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last one remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calms, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, and I flicker back. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. <sighs> Come on. As somebody who has pretty handwriting. And I do. She's got pretty, pretty handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking about that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well... I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. No, not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost theory? <laughs> Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her past, remaining... No, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's expressive. <laughs> it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh... You know... I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you. Uh, me too. Whew! I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. This was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everybody is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice. That music, though. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They, are gingerly, ex they gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri, so Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. 
Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come off that. Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Uh, well, I have a couple of suggestions. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked somebody who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Shade did too. So based on that, I'd gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I'd appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change any time soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Ugh. And Shade liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh... You, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Shade appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I'd deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Arrgh. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Shade started showing up. Natsuki! <laughs> uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! <laughs> Taking out your own insecurities on others like that, you really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Oh. Me! Look who's talking about, you wannabe edgy bitch! <laughs> edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Is the music leading up to something? Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only thing cute about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad, you already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Shade hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Ah! Suddenly, Yuri turns to me, as if she just noticed I was standing here. Shade! She, she's just trying to make me look bad! That's not true. She started it. I don't want to choose, man! Don't bring me into your freaking argument! I hate when people do that! If there was a third option, it would be, fuck off the both of you, shut the fuck up and settle down. I said we were going to go Yuri's direction this time. <laughs> what are you doing on my screen? Um, hey Shade. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us that they stay out of this. We'll go back inside when they're done yelling. Haha. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own pro club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little bit more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway. If this makes you want to spend less time with others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. 
I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Shade, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. I don't like the way you said that, Monica. Noseless Monica. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take the responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I just didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Shade. It would just be embarrassing if you were listening. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble. Okay, let's just skip all of that, huh? The suspiciousness. Oh, the suspiciousness. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Graveyard! Mega! Secretive! Existence! Night Gown! Oh! Oh! You're. Uh, Natsuki! Natsuki with the freaking nightgown! Okay. Um. Mm, entropy! Uh. Tragedy! Pleasure? Yeah, I thought so. Vivacious! Disaster. Efful... Effu... Effulgent? Judgment! <laughs> That's what you get for being a, known, a stupid frickin' word. Um, hmm. Extreme. Melancholy. Anxiety. And what is this? What is this? Determination! Contamination. Depression. Destiny. And death. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the, the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Shade. Oh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound, so please don't think that we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri? I'm happy you were able- you were considerate and apologized. But you don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think less of you. I've already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you didn't mean it. Uh... Shade? Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh... Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, no I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, 
Natsuki, about yesterday, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. These seem like edits, don't they? I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But I'll accept your apology anyway. Hmm. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I always, I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. Heh <laughs> No, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not! <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. So, to be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. I don't believe you! Especially how you said that Natsuki probably wouldn't remember today, and she doesn't seem like she does. You are suspect number one. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music well, Monica. Ah, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Ah, oh, well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Ah, <laughs> that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I'm, a, I'm working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Shade. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica is referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. Sir, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose not to bring anything that the three of us talked about up. Besides, Natsuki has already run off to the closet. Shade, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay, can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Ah, uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. I just... I won't stop... My heart, it won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Y yeah, but I need to try and calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if we make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she... Why would you watch? <laughs> I follow and watch as she retrieves a small glass pitcher from the shelf. The kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Ah, to help, of course. Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric knife. An electric kettle. Why did I say electric knife? <laughs> I'm going to plug this in to, at the teacher's desk and I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her, really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Uh, did Yuri leave you again? 
No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up. I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha 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 ha. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Gah. A sharp inhale, like somebody sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Ah! Heck. <laughs> I'm back! I guess we're just pretending that didn't happen. <laughs> Thanks for waiting patiently. Shade, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200, deg 200 degrees. Now, it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll, on you'll only be more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a little bit of thinking, and I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out, it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Uh, that's great, Yuri. <laughs> Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Shade, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's just a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over my desk. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. Really, dude, what are you, frickin' 14? You've never dated a girl before? I wonder why. It's the mo- it's most likely because my, uh... My... your posture, right? Smooth. <laughs> Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! Yes, I have terrible reading posture! That's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and grab the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacup at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I, I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? By not being a creep, maybe? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus, because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri has noticed... Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between our legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I won't have to have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. Well, in that case, 
Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. And then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh... Shade? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh... Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Shade. Suddenly Yuri forcibly grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Shade? My heart. My heart won't stop pounding. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. This is... Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. Uh... It makes it... It makes me not... It even makes me not want to read. I just want... To look... At you. Oh, that's... Disturbing. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Ha. <sighs> ha. <sighs> um, it's time to share poems. Awkward. Yuri. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Shade. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job of explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more, more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Ah, uh, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued, Shade. Oh god. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. Haha. <laughs> I, I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Shade? I'm not being weird, right? Just having a harder time than usual concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed, but right now I just want you to read my poem too. Okay. Wheel. A rotating wheel turning an axle, grinding, bolt-head linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, Parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open waters in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring snakes with, humans eye, with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, yuck, a kaleidoscope of holy snakes, exponential gear... Ex exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of a god, I, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, forty gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks forty times, every time it ticks, every second time, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears and open human eyes in all directions. What is this, Evangelion? <laughs> breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, <laughs> breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. <laughs> It doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I take it out on your pen. Uh, that is, a pen. 
fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just, I really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. Haha. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> what did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Okay. Yeah, just as I thought. Shade, come on. I'm not stupid. I know how much time you've been spending with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to improve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Why are you even in this club, Shade? Honestly, I thought getting a new member would help everybody get more involved together, not exclude each other even more. This is such a stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today. I just really don't feel like talking about it right now, so please go away. Okay. Shade, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? Don't be a bitch about it. <laughs> she even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. Dude, this is real personal information. Like, mind your own fucking business. Don't be a cunt about it. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. So fucking judgy. I just think that she gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. So fucking judgy. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though, but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. I don't think I like you, Monica. You're like really like off the cuff, off the cuff remarks and stuff. I don't like it. So, I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, you shouldn't be too shy to spend a little more time with me. Wow. To put it lightly, I have... I have it together in my... <laughs> to put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. Really? Because you just shat all over one of them. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out. So I hope you do too. Save me. The colours, they won't. Bright. Beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating. Waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like placing playing a knife on a breathing rib on a breathing ribcage. Something of meaningless. Okay, there's there's a code here. Um U I O Oh, I. Okay, that's that doesn't spell nothing. Well, didn't like that. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to um. Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when um. Well, I don't like that. Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything? Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. 
My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminable width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Okay, I'm going to call that an episode there. If you guys like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell to stay up to date with episodes, and until the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club, you've been watching Dude Go Back. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, so, uh, there's more stuff in the game folder. Can you hear me? There's a little devil inside of all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread, loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them all of motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable tangled mess is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Kind of uncool. We also have... I. I hate this. I can't do anything. Nothing. No matter how many times you play, it's all the same. It would be really, really easy to kill myself right now, but that would mean I don't get to talk to you anymore. All I want is for you to hate them. Why is that so hard? Also, equally uncool. Alrighty guys, see you in the next episode.